This is the moment I've been waiting for to share the results of my 30 day challenge on the slow carb diet. Welcome to Get It Together, and if you're new here, this video is just bleh every single time. This channel, this channel. Welcome to Get It Together, and if you're new here, this channel is just me trying to figure out how to get my life together and sharing the tips and lessons I learned along the way. And as you may have gathered from the intro, this video is just the final reveal, the grand reveal, the results of my 30 days on the slow carb diet. This video is gonna be broken down into five portions. The first one is the one that we've all kind of been waiting for, which is the numbers, how much weight I've lost, the body fat percentage loss, all that stuff. The second portion are gonna be kind of these interesting side benefits that I've discovered in this short month on the slow carb diet. The third section are going to be what I believe are advantages that I have had. These should not be serving as excuses for anybody who doesn't have these advantages, but I do feel that it's important that I recognize that I do indeed have some advantages that some of you may not have. The fourth portion of this video is basically gonna be what's next. Now that I have 30 days of data points, I'll be able to actually make real plans. And if you noticed in the last video, I'm absolutely continuing on with a slow carb diet. Today is the first day of actually week six on the slow carb diet for me. And the fifth section is gonna be a subscriber giveaway announcement. I'm gonna be giving away the two tools that have been invaluable to me. Literally, it would have been impossible, for me anyways, without these two things. All right, let's just go right into the numbers. And if you're like me, when I first started out, everything was just about weight. But if you saw my metrics video over here, weight is actually the least important metric to be tracking. But I do think it is a strong anchor point for everyone's psychology, so how much weight did I lose? I'm gonna to toss up my first day readout, which is on day zero, and then my second readout, which is on day 30 over here. And as you can see, just from a strictly weight perspective, I went from 214.8 to 193.2, and that's pounds. So that's a grand total loss of 21.6 pounds over 30 days on the slow carb diet. I must say that I actually weighed less before I started going crazy on cheat day, and this readout is actually still some water weight tacked on to what I had put on during cheat day. But fair is fair, 30 days is 30 days. But let's dive into the numbers that I find much more important and much more interesting. And that is body fat percentage and visceral fat levels. Again, tossing up the screens and zooming in a little bit, we can see that I started out at 31.2% body fat and ended up at 28% on the dot. And that represents a 3.2% drop in body fat percentage. And when it comes to visceral fat, and again, the importance of tracking visceral fat is laid out in that same metrics video linked above. I went from 13 down to 10. This represents the biggest change for me because again, my goal is to get into the single digits. The only other kind of metric that I was tracking, which I was not tracking throughout the entire 30 days, just on day zero and day 30, is my waist measurement. And I started at 40.5 inches. Nah. And I dropped down to just shy of 39, so like 38.9 inches. Now before diving into the second portion of the video, which is all the side benefits that I've realized over the course of these 30 days, I kind of want to do like this myth busters almost type thing. I want to explore this one myth that I had before I started the slow carb diet. And it also does have to do with numbers, and it's an interesting number. And that myth is that it costs too much to eat healthy. And that's just a gigantic myth because putting in all of the costs of all of my ingredients and then separating them into the daily value, my average meal cost is less than $3 US. Compare that to the way I was eating before these 30 days, lots of drive throughs at fast food places, lots of pizza, none of those meals costed less than $3. Now let's dive into the side benefits and they also kind of touch a little bit on some qualitative metrics. The first one is just the sheer time savings. To be able to cook all three meals in one shot in less than 15 minutes, I'll link that cooking video up here as well, is just incredible. The amount of time I save versus getting into a car and going through a drive through which would take more than 15 minutes for just one meal, is insane. Another side benefit is one of the most important qualitative metrics that I mentioned in the metrics video. And that's just straight up being happier in the knowledge that I'm making healthier choices. So regardless of how much weight, body fat percentage, and visceral fat and inches off my waist I've lost, there's one irrefutable fact, and that's just me having the happiness to know that I'm definitely healthier and making healthier choices than I was before. The third side benefit is kind of random, but it's the fact that I'm actually keeping a clean kitchen. I cooked so seldomly before, and so my kitchen sink and counter were always full of like juice and sweet drinks left in cups. And if I ever did cook, that frying pan wouldn't get washed for days. But now because I have to use these tools every single day, my kitchen counter is spotless. The fourth benefit is something that was shockingly noticeable to me. I mean, I assume there would be a difference here just because everyone kind of talks about it, but the amount of energy that's sustained throughout the day compared to before I started this low carb diet is just incredible. I don't hit that two o'clock or three o'clock wall that I used to where as soon as it's two or three o'clock, I just really want to take a nap. And just overall, I just feel a lot more energetic. 
And the last side benefit just has to do with confidence and it's just confidence in order to get things done. Even though there were many challenges I faced in the weekly update videos that I posted, to be able to stick with something for 30 days with 100% compliance and strictness, is just a confidence boost to me to know that like, if I just commit to things, I can really just get things done. And that's been really huge. Now let's move on to the third portion of the video, which is just identifying all the advantages that I feel that I had. We all have different situations in life, and I just think it's important for me to be able to recognize some advantages that may very well have made it a lot easier for me to go through these 30 days than potentially other people. There are four key advantages that I believe that I had. The first one is that I don't have kids, nor do I live with anyone that would have junk food lying around the house. That is huge because if you guys may have remembered from my second or third update video, I faced the most intense craving and had there been any kind of junk food, I know with almost near certainty that I would have cracked. The second advantage I feel that I have is that I own a car and I know that it might not have anything to do directly with a slow carb diet, but things like, oh crap, I forgot to buy eggs or this, it's just a lot easier for me to just hop in the car and go get my ingredients. The third advantage that I feel I had is that I'm male, so I don't have a menstrual cycle that just messes with bloating and mood and all these types of things that I'm not even going to pretend to understand. But what I do know is that through non-insignificant research, there are a lot more things that women have to face when it has to do with dealing with just like weight fluctuations, for example, which is yet another reminder as to why I feel it's so important to just ignore the weight on the scale. Please do watch that metrics video because weight is just not an accurate representation and there's too many points of fluctuation and too many counterintuitive markers that just don't relate to health. Water weight, muscle weighing more than fat, many, many things. And the last advantage I feel I had is that cheat days just didn't mess with me that badly. What I mean by this is that in the four hour body, Tim Ferriss says that it's not uncommon to shoot up 10 to 20 pounds after cheat day. But for me, the most I ever gained in the four cheat days over the 30 day experiment was 3.7 pounds. Now again, Tim Ferriss writes that by a huge margin, most of that is water weight that you're gonna shed. But just psychologically, for me able to stand on a scale and not see this insane double digit gain the day after cheat day had to have been an advantage. And yet again is another reminder to just ignore what the weight says on your scale. The last thing I want to say about this is that even though I feel it's important that I identify these advantages, that at the end of the day, everyone's journey is everyone's journey. So the aim of this portion of this video is most certainly not to just arm you with potential excuses, but rather to just be completely transparent in what I believe are just things that could potentially have made my journey easier in some respects. On the other side of that coin, there may have been other things that I'm not cognizant of that are disadvantages that I have. I don't know. Now onto the fourth section of the video, which is the one that I'm most excited about. And it's also a reminder as to why I believe it's so important to track the metrics. Because now that I have all these data points and I see what's possible, now I can actually plan for the future and set some realistic goals. But before diving into the goals, I wanna talk about a few changes that I'm gonna be making. The first change is that I'm gonna open the door to a bit more protein selection. Meaning for lunch and dinner, I'm not gonna just stick only with chicken and salmon. I'm gonna open the door to like shrimp or beef or mm, bacon. And the second change I'm gonna be making is I'm also gonna be now stacking some exercise. And the exercise I'm gonna be doing is stuff that's laid out in the four hour body. So primarily kettlebell swings and myotatic crunches to see if stacking exercise is gonna accelerate how much body fat percentage I lose in month two. Speaking of how much I lose in month two, what are the actual goals and metrics that I'm gonna be tracking? First and foremost, I'm not even gonna bother with weight. I don't care about weight anymore. I'm only gonna be focusing on body fat percentage and visceral fat. So when it comes to body fat percentage, I went in month one from 31.2 down to 28%, which represented a 3.2% change. As you may remember from the metrics video, 25% or over body fat percentage for men anyways is classified as obese. And although I'm not sure if I'm gonna have as big of a change in the second month as I did the first, again, typically the more fat you have to lose in the first place, the faster it is at the beginning. And so I think it's an optimistic goal, but I want to go now from 28 to 24.9% body fat, just so I can clear myself out of that obesity range. When it comes to visceral fat, I went from 13 down to 10, and my goal is to get into single digits. I'm gonna to toss up the screens from the before and after of this 30 day challenge from the Smart Scale app right now. And it's just to say that visually, as you can see, I had a lot more red and yellow when I started, and now I have a lot more yellow and green. And it's just repeating again what I said in the previous video as to why I love this smart scale and app so much. In that even if I'm not paying so much attention to the actual numbers, I can just pay attention to the colors. The goal is to get everything into the green zone. And now onto the fifth part of this video, which is the subscriber giveaway. There are two tools that had I not had them would have made this so much harder, if not impossible for me. And because of your support, I want to do a giveaway for all the subscribers. Those two tools are the smart scale, as well as 
the Cuisinart grill that I used. Again, you guys may remember that I'm just not somebody who cooks. So having this and not having to mess with the oven and pan frying has just made cooking, being able to cook all of my meals in one shot again in 15 minutes or less, invaluable. Before we get to that though, I'm doing this giveaway for, I mean, a few reasons. One of the reasons is because I was already mentally prepared to lose $100, and it's because of your help that I didn't lose that $100. But in my mind, because I was already mentally prepared, these two prizes costed just over $100, and it ties into the real main reason, which is to thank you guys. You guys watching these videos and having some conversations with me have been huge, huge motivators for me to really stick through this 30-day challenge, so thank you. All right, enough touchy-feely. How do we enter this contest? There are two things you gotta do to enter this contest. Because it's a subscriber giveaway, you gotta be subscribed to the channel. And the second thing you gotta do is to comment below in the comment section one of two things. Either any challenge that you've faced with dieting period, whether it's with the slow carb diet or some other diet, or to ask me a question specifically to do with the slow carb diet in the comment section below. When it comes to the details and the terms of this giveaway, they're all gonna be written in detail in the description below, but in general, it's really, really simple. I will pay for the shipping to the winner anywhere in the world, but some countries, depending on where you live, might charge you some duties or taxes when it comes to importing stuff. And those will be the winner's responsibility to pay. Speaking of that video that's gonna be announcing the winner, it's not just gonna be announcing that winner, it's also gonna be announcing the next series on Get It Together. It's something that I struggled with for years, and I know that the next series will be able to help you or somebody that you love quite a lot. To give you a really weird abstract hint, even though it has nothing to do with health or dieting, if you are on the slow carb diet, you're already ahead of the game. I know I said it before, but this 30 day challenge would not have been possible without you guys for watching and having conversations with me in the comments. And also to any of you that are following me on Git Vlog for keeping me accountable and making sure that I post my breakfast, lunch, and dinner every single day over this past 30 day challenge. If you got value out of this video, and especially if you want to enter that contest, be sure to subscribe and comment below. I gotta get ready to go watch game two of the NBA Finals with my beloved Raptors, so I'll see you guys in the next one. Cool.